All right. Okay. I don't think anybody's on right now, but this will be good practice for Friday. I just have to remember that the pictures are strange because looking at my screen, everything's reversed. Um, so I went to Goodwill today, the little tiny one near me that half the time is always empty. And I really had to struggle to find stuff. I was there for a while, but I found some cool things and I thought I'd share them and show you what we've got. Now, not all of these are going to be up right away because I still have to identify them. I found a set of four of these, which is now a set of three because one of the glasses has a crack in it. When she was wrapping them up, I think she hit, because it made a weird noise, and I think she hit the counter too hard because she went plunk, and I think that's when it cracked. But I have to ID these. Look at that. Isn't that really cool looking? They're in pretty good shape. It was $5.99 for the set, but there's no, I could not find any markers. There's no maker's name. They look really good. So I've got a couple of barware kind of glassware things that I'm going to have to research to figure out who made them. But what I was after was this, this little plastic thing. See, there's two green, two red. Now that whole set was $5.99 for the set, but the real prize is this little cup holder. These are made by Dapol Plastics. You know what Dapol made in the 60s? Blow molds. They made a ton of Christmas plastic stuff. Now everybody knows the blow molds. Not all the other little stuff they did. And these little cup holder things are pretty rare. So I think it was worth it for $5.99 for the glasses set. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to make double that on those little plastic pieces. Um, another thing I got is that, and some of you may not know it. I mean, it is vintage, but it's also kind of a specialty market. Anything to do with the PGA tours, a lot of stuff has some value there. And can you see that one? PGA Championship 1992 at the Bellarive Country Club. It has the logo. I have a pair of these. Because they didn't have a price sticker on them, she just charged me for glassware, which is only 50 cents a piece. So what I might have, you know, paid up for the other glasses, I paid way down for these. Um, this lovely little pair intrigued me. I again no maker's mark none at all and it really has the light I got to get better lighting in here before the live sale I need to put a light on this side but that's a gold band and it's it is it's it is a thin metal band that is really attached to the glass I mean it's just amazingly uh, etched. It looks like stylized roses and flowers and leaves, and it's very cool looking. And if you could see it up close, that it really kind of, this way, I can get the light to reflect on one of the flowers. It's got that early arts and crafts kind of look, almost like a Renee Macintosh to the to the rose heads. So those are really pretty cool. Nice little sherry glasses. Um, now this is something that's kind of old. It's a tin pan, and these would be molds for Jello, but you could also make cakes in them. Usually, like a bunt cake, and then you would put powdered sugar across the top. But I really like the starburst pattern that's all over it. It kind of reminded me of like ice on a window, you know, in the wintertime. So I thought that was pretty cool. I also have an antique one that's in the shape of a leaf. 
of an aspen leaf that I need to get online. So I'll try to make sure I get these both listed at the same time. That's a pretty cool piece. This one I got for me. I got this just for me because it's um it's a snowman and I collect snowmen. I got this just for me. Turn that off. It's uh you open them up. Isn't that cool? Uh who's he made by? Just says Mr. Christmas, made in China. Little wind up music box. I can't decide. His little nose has a little chip. And and I just figure he got frostbite. He's been out in the cold too. He's got frostbite. I don't like Frosty the Snowman particularly. Um, but I do like uh snowmen and I, I always try to look for vintage ones, but he's he's gonna be for me. So I will be keeping him. He's just adorable. Speaking of adorable little things, I got these three little puppies and their heads are so heavy. We have this little brown Yorkie with his little top hat on, but you can see, especially with him, you can really see it. This is really, really thick and this thickness goes all the way up and the heads the heads are just so heavy. So like this whole ears, the whole top of the head, that's solid plaster. He's got a few little chips on the back of the ears. And I don't see, he was 99 cents, but they were made in 1989. Aaron, someone. And then this one, Aaron, this has an EQ on the bottom. And this one says Aaron Q, 1989. But look at the little face. Look at the little face. So cute. This one, this one makes me think of Tiggy. Um, Tiggy Wink's vintage, her little Pomeranian. Makes me think of her. And then look at this little one. Look at how cute she is. So adorable. So cute. This one reminds me of Fleeta. I miss having a dog. But I used to have a white Pekingese, and she was the runt of the litter, and she had breathing problems. So she got too excited. She got too excited. She'd have what sounded like an asthma attack because her um, esophagus, her, her windpipe, was a little too small. It didn't get full grown. So she'd go ha and hack. Hey, Lady Hack Mom. How are you? Yeah, I know it's the middle of the morning for me. It's like, what time is it? It's 3.27 a.m. But I figure, you know, on the West Coast, it's it's not that late. So I'm practicing anyway, because, you know, Thursday is the big first live. <sighs> yeah, you know, still a little nervous about that. But we'll manage. We've got a lot to do that night. Um. I also found this, and this was $2.99, but I don't think that's a bad price when you find this kind of bohemian glass. I think this size was meant to be an, <coughs> excuse me, an ashtray. It's got its funny little pontal mark, um, but look at the colorings. Now, he is, he's a green one. I had to hold it up to the light to see. Because I see you guys can't really see it. It's the one hard part about doing the live I'm going to do um, at night is that I don't get any light from these two windows. So I'm going to have to fix that and find a way to get a light on me on this side. And make sure I put makeup on because I'm so pale. Normally I'm pale. So think I'll be fine, Lady Hack Mom? I sure hope so. All that theater training go to waste if I wasn't. <laughs> we'll see. This is another thing that these are older. Check out the shape of these two little shot glasses. You know, Goodwill always has a ton of shot glasses and a ton of mugs. But I've never seen amber shot glasses. Now, 
This one, I don't see a chip, but I can feel a little tiny thing. And there's no markings on the bottom. So like the other glassware, this is stuff I'm going to have to see if I can figure out who made it. Put you next to the, in the box next to the poodles. But some of the collectible stuff in shot glasses is pretty cool. Now that was an older set. This one still has all the tags on it, but this is from the, oh, this one really isn't going to show up well. There we go. That's the torch. This is from the Atlanta 1996 Olympic Games. And I know there's collectors for Olympic stuff. This one surprised me because they're made. They've got the L on the bottom. It's made by Libby. But it's the NBC Peacock. Do they even still use the Peacock? I don't know. But that was pretty cool. And all of these still have, you know, well, the NBC Peacock one doesn't. But the this other one, it has the original label thing on the bottom. And this is a NASCAR one. And I know NASCAR is pretty big. So I thought I'd give that one a try. And they all look pristine. There's not anything wrong with them. No scratches to the logo. You can see that not only does this one have its official little hologram thing, it's still got that sticker on the back, which um, had some handwriting on it. That's not a barcode sticker. What's left has, has stuff written on it. So I thought I'd give them a try. Any little thing that helps. I mean, I needed to get out of the house today. So that's what Goodwill was for. <laughs> get me out of the house for a little bit. Another thing I have from Goodwill... And they're a little dusty. I have to clean them up. They've never been used. Does anybody remember back in the 70s, I think? The late 70s, the things called an unlamp, where you'd put some kind of little oil in something, and you'd kind of then just put a wick in it. And this thing comes with a whole bunch of these little wicks. But... It is still, it's never been used. This is called Glow Light, uh, G L O L I T E, and it tells you to put two and a half tablespoonfuls of oil and then put the wick in. And but, and it goes in up here, this is all plastic. But look at the image, isn't that cute? That's really cute. Oh, these little Christmas elves making a holly garland. That is so cute. So they're going to have to be decided what to do. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm going to do another live because I don't know. I want to see how the first one goes. And then if I can put together more Christmas stuff. And more things for the holiday. Then maybe I'll do a second one um, in early December. So we'll see how that goes. Um, this was the only other one. Now, <clears throat> oh, this time of year, you have to forgive me. I have allergies that are just killing me in the fall. Oh, leaf mold. And I'm a Boy Scout. So in the fall, when the leaves come down, the allergies just get to me. The box has some issues. But this is from 1984, and it's called Flights of Fancy. And it also is these little elves riding on different little birds. There is a good picture of one. And it's such a cute thing. So, yeah, I mean, all this Christmas stuff is, is all pretty vintage. And I have some. I did find a few things that are in the live sale. I'm going to give you a treat, Lady Hack Mom. You're going to get to see this before anybody else sees it for the live sale. I found this hiding in the pantry. It was 
in a plastic bag, bag was tied shut, up on a top shelf. I don't know why mom stuck it up there, but it was up there. The box itself is pretty cool, but the label is gone. So all I could see was something faded that I can't really tell. And then it says Japan. So I open it up. I take it out. And again, all I see is this, right? I just see this little star. Now this little star has a little chippy here, a little chippy there, but it's on the back. And this was cracked off at some point, but you don't see that from the front. The back has this little bits of felt on it. The only mark is, I think that's a 6079. It's a Holt Howard tray. I didn't think I owned any Holt Howard. I didn't know there was any in the house. But it definitely is a Holt Howard tray. I have positive, positively ID'd it every which way to Sunday. So that's going to be in the live sale on Thanksgiving night. So I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't think I had any. And I know there's a lot of collectors for those. And it's got the original box. So I think that'll be fun. So that's going to be an offer up Thanksgiving night. So but that's, that's everything for right now. And I figured I'd do this because it was due for another video. I'm trying to get better. Oh, there's one more thing. I forgot I put him off to the side because he's so much heavier. I don't want to put him with the glass. I think I'm going to keep him. I don't like Elf on a Shelf, but I do like the Elves a little bit, especially if they're different. This is somebody's initials in 1987. Check him out. It's an E-Wild. I do have a mystery house. I absolutely have a mystery house. Because um, mom was a bit of a pack rat. And then before mom passed away, um, we had, when my father died, his death was sudden. I was only 30. And mom was kind of in shock. But in six months time, from the time he passed away, we had 11 funerals in six months. At least one of those required a house to be emptied in the family. And it all was on my mom. So there's stuff here from her. There's stuff from another friend who passed away. And I have a lot of stuff from that estate. And then another friend passed away and left me a massive book collection. And I'm still working through that. So when I do live sales, I honestly could theme them. I have so much stuff of different varieties i could theme them this first one is kind of elephant heavy because i um i actually won an um i won at a the local auction house i won a tray of elephants i forgot i had bid on and uh, the only one i'm not sure about is this little guy where's the camera there we go he's so cute and he's got little tusks and such a great face even the mouth has a little pink, but there's a chip. This piece is broken. There's a little wedge shape here, which doesn't show up too well. Like there you can see it, but he's got a mark too. I don't recognize the mark and they did a great job. He's all hand none, but all this is textured. Um, so I haven't decided about him for, I don't know that anybody's going to want him with a break like that. And uh, the other thing I have is this little guy. I can't figure this one out either. This is another one that found in the top of the shelf. I've never seen it before. I don't know where it came from. Mom had to. It's got a good will sticker on it. Mom had to have bought it. She did like purple flowers. But I can't figure. It's not just a bowl. These are little holes in it. And it is marked hand-painted Nippon. So it's older because it's in a pond, but I just can't get what the, why would you have holes in it? 
So my mystery house, my house full of mystery stuff of what's in the box also has mystery stuff that I have no idea what it is. So it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. So uh, I just keep plugging away. You know, if you've seen my other videos, you know that, you know, I'm a big one about you got to have goals when you, you knew inherit all this stuff and friends have said oh you should just do a yard sale or a lot you know do do an estate sale you'd have to have enough empty space to do an estate sale the other problem is is that most of it's such minutia and little stuff i will make more doing it this way and doing it myself than i would if i just tried to just do an estate sale especially considering the urban area i'm in so it, it makes a difference i do better trying to do it online it's just that it's taking a lot longer and yard sales don't work here because i i am just over the city limits of a small city that doesn't have in this county has a bad a worse reputation than it deserves but i'm not anywhere near any of that my city has got this end of the city is cut off by I-95. The majority of the city is on the other side. So people don't like to come into the city limits, even though I get deer here. That was a surprise. I'm not sure where they even came from. They were in the neighbor's yard a couple nights ago. <laughs> but I regularly have little critters that should be in a forest. And there's not a lot of forest near me. The park is that way, quite a few blocks. And there's a little arboretum that way. I guess they're just following the creeks because Ridley Creek and Chester Creek are both Chester Creek's that way, Ridley Creek's that way. And so I guess they just follow that and then start following the shrubbery. And my yard's an oasis of trees in, in an otherwise, you know, pretty barren landscape because so many people cut their trees down. But you need them. Oh, you live on the edge of a national forest. That could be both good and bad. Bigger things live in national forests. <laughs> that could be a double-edged one. Boy, I'll bet the bird song you must hear must be pretty cool. I just get tired of seeing the, the red-tailed hawk kill my birds. <laughs> bear yeah that bear thing that's what i was thinking of that's the bad of being on uh, you have bigger things in a national forest <laughs> i'd be nervous about bear <laughs> they make me nervous closest i got to a wild bear he was up on top of a 20-foot cliff and i was on my way to the outhouse i suddenly didn't have to go to the outhouse anymore <laughs> I was ready to turn around and go back to that cabin. <laughs> Mo oh, moose are huge. I've never seen one in person, but my son has when he was on a Boy Scout trip to Wyoming. I have hawks, and, and that's what I get tired of it, eating my, my birds that come to my bird feeder. Um, because there's a red-tailed hawk. Um, it's been the same one for years. He's got to be getting old. And the only reason I know it's the same one is because he's got a dot, a dot, a dot, and a dot. So he's got these four dark spots in the feathering. And he likes to come and eat the morning doves and the squirrels. Now, he can have all the squirrels he wants because um, American gray squirrels are kind of invasive. They're all over Britain now. Britain, we think of Britain having a little squirrel nutkin, a little red squirrel. Only, I think, the Isle of Wight or the Isle of Man has any red squirrels left because some fool let loose American gray squirrels in Great Britain and they've taken over the place. So yeah, they're, uh... Oh, you cannot see in the dark. So your typing is questionable. Oh, don't feel bad. I had a mini stroke due to medication a couple of years ago. My typing's been questionable ever since. <laughs> Six doves. Aw. I love the doves. I love the little whirring noise they, they make when their wings, when the wings take off, when there's something to do with the feathers that makes that funny little noise when they take off. 
So my cat's been trying to make up to the fact that she got a hold of one uh, a couple days ago, but it from the marks that were on it, I don't think she was the first thing to get a hold of it because that sure looked like talon marks. Yeah, I absolutely adore the doves, the morning doves. So we have them, and I've noticed that uh, I haven't seen any chickadees yet or the titmouse, um, titmice, because they they come down here to my area, Pennsylvania, for the winter. We only usually see them in the winter. So not yet. hasn't quite been cold enough. I don't have bees. Bees are helpful. You need them. I'm allergic. I steer clear of bees. I also got swarmed as a kid, and I'm terrified of them. <laughs> Anything that stings. <laughs> oh. You know the little birds, too? Yeah. We mostly have little birds. I think the biggest thing that's been around, because I haven't seen, I haven't seen a flicker at all this year, which is a big kind of a woodpecker um, sort of a flicker will actually land on the ground to eat. So most of the birds I've seen have been kind of small this year. The biggest thing I've seen is a blue jay other than the hawk, but the hawk doesn't stay here for the summer. We only ever see the red tailed hawk in the winter time. So, uh, but you could tell winter's coming because the groundhog has come back. He lives under the neighbor's shed. Oh, 41 roses. Oh, I'm so jealous. 41 roses. Oh, I'm so jealous. I have four. <laughs> Friends of mine used to be, um, Don Myers used to be president of the Delaware Rose Society in the state of Delaware. And he had the most amazing rose garden and he had four or 500 roses. It was like walking into a nursery. It was amazing. Oh, David Austin roses are wonderful. I had a David Austin rose. It used to be right outside the front porch, but it finally, oh, I have five roses. I forgot about the red one out there. It's kind of scraggly. It's not doing too well. Um, but, uh, I had a David Austin one, but that, that passed away a couple years ago. And I know they tell you not to put a row, a new rose in the same dirt where a old rose had been. So I haven't, I haven't dug that area out and put fresh dirt in to put another rose in. There's a lot of outdoor work that didn't happen this year because of me having fractured my hand. Hi, Charnel. Another late night person. Are you guys both on the West Coast? I made the mistake of like falling asleep at like 10 o'clock and then woke up at, at two and went, well, now what do I do? Because <laughs> here in Pennsylvania, it's it's quarter of four in the morning. And I my plan had been to like restock my eBay store and my Etsy store. I keep talking about it and then other things get in the way and I haven't done it. So now that I have two boxes of stuff ready for the live sale, I can get to working on that. Oh, okay, Charnel, you're in Washington State and you're in Idaho. So that was another reason I thought, well, I could practice going on live because nobody's on in the middle of the night. It's late in, you know, on the West Coast, but not that late. Not like my late. <laughs> It seems like a lot of the, the YouTube lives I've seen of the resellers is a lot of them are Midwest and East Coast. And so they're. Uh... Oh, awesome. You've got your hundred. My store is down to 50 some items. Because I hadn't 51. My story is down to 51 items. Before I fractured my hand, I had just hit 200 listings and then um, and then fell and fractured my hand. And it just, I just I couldn't type. I couldn't pack that well. So I just shopped a lot and did videos. <laughs> yeah, that's great that you 
did and now did you go up to a basic store subscription? Because I that was something I hadn't done, and I've been selling on. I mean, I used to sell under another name on eBay for years, um, but came up with a new name because I wanted to do. Okay, yeah, you you get so much. Uh huh. See, Charnel, I did the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, now see, I have a file that's got about 50 pictures in it, but I haven't gotten it. <laughs> and as far as having so much to put up, yeah, you see this behind me. This is my living room. This is the warehouse. Um, I've joked about it in my previous videos, but this is, I couldn't afford a storage unit when I got downsized out of a job at, at, a, at an art museum. And uh, so I had to bring it all home. And I didn't have any living room furniture, so... Because when, you know, when an estate gets divided up, things get divided out. So the last pic. Oh, there are never last pictures. Who are you kidding, Lady Hack Mom? There's never last pictures. There's always more stuff to put up. <laughs> it is hard to get in a groove of listing. Yeah. My problem is during the day, my brother likes to keep interrupting me. So it's hard to get in that groove because, you know, he gets bored and about every 20 to 30 minutes, he comes down to tell me something he saw on the TV or read in the news. And but OK, so you'll be caught up. Yeah. Caught up is a good thing. Caught up is a very good thing. I'm not caught up. Not by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> the live sale will help with that because, like I said, I've got I have 60. Well, because of the bonus Barbies, I have 63 items for the live sale, which is ambitious. I'm not expecting to get through all of them. Fatbird Finds had said have at least 50 because on their first sale, they blew through 50 items real quick. Um, so I filled out a little notebook and, and I have two pages of stuff and that's 60 items. So I have 60 items. And if we get through them all, fantastic. If we don't, we don't. Um, but if we do, that'll really get me caught up. Oh, Charnel, I'm sorry to hear about that. Now, did you get stuck by COVID in February because you had it or just because of the lockdowns? I had it, a mild case of it. I was blessed. In my case of it was very mild in March. And the only reason they said it was so mild was because I sleep on my stomach. And so the bronchitis, the not bronchitis, but all that mucus that gets into people's lungs went into my bronchial tube. So I had to be on nebulizer for quite a while. Um, and especially early on. It hits so fast. It hit me in four hours from the time I woke up with viral pink eye to when I couldn't breathe and had to be at the ER. And I am so very sorry about your dad. I know that's, it's hard. I'm, I'm already an orphan. My dad passed. I was only 30 and mom passed. I was 41 and it's not easy because suddenly you're the elder generation. Takes some getting used to. Oh, you had it last winter. Last winter. What was I doing? What did I have wrong last winter? Well, last winter I had that, uh, I had a horrible case of bronchitis last winter. Oh. Yeah, I do feel so bad for the people in the Chinese restaurants or anybody, anybody of Asian Asian uh, race because they got they have been getting a lot of harassment. Now, I have worried about my aunt. I have an aunt who's from Japan, and Aunt Michiko is in her. I think she's she's eighty one now. She doesn't need any harassment. You know, <laughs> she went through enough of that when she came back here as a war bride after World War Two. She didn't need that. Oh wow, Lady Hack Mom, that's that's hard. To be that young, though I get it. My um, 
I raised a nephew um, since he was two and his mother, my sister-in-law passed away when he was only seven. So I've been aunt mommy for a long time. Um, and it, it is, it, it is different when you're that young and you lose a parent. Like Mike says, you know, you think about, you hit all these milestones in your life and you can't help but think of them because, you know, they, they've missed it. They miss so much of you turning into an adult. Oh yeah. Little Japanese babies are so adorable. They're so cute. Oh yeah, you will grow up fast. You will. I didn't realize how sheltered I was being the youngest of six. I grew up with four brothers in a Boy Scout troop. My sister's 14 years older than I am. I saw more of her after she got married when I was 13 than I ever remember before that. Because by the time I was old enough to remember her, she left for college. But yeah, at 30, yeah, even at 30, I grew up quick. And it was only because of how sh sheltered I had been. Because at the end of that six months after my dad died, I got instant mom because I had custody of a two-year-old. But yeah, at 23, whew, your brain keeps growing until you're in your like about 25, 26. And the last part to grow is all the judgment skills sections of the brain. So to have that happen before you hit that, that's such a learning curve in those early 20s and then to have that happen oh man but you know you you got a you've got an ebay store you're doing something you know you're you're working ahead and doing something so that's good anything these days that helps you make some extra income Oh, now, Charnel, did they close the shop, the restaurant for good or are they just closed for now? But in a small town with that kind of harassment, it's probably for good. Oh, yeah. 16 years older than you. Yeah, that's the age spread with me and Steve. Yeah, they're 16 years apart. He didn't want anything to do with a baby in this house until he twisted his ankle and was stuck here in the living room with his record player and a cot to lay on. And cause his bedroom was on the third floor. So he couldn't, he couldn't do that. So they had to have him stay down here. Mom had to go out. And depending on who tells the story, I was either three weeks old or three months old. And when she got back, Steve's sitting there, with me on his lap and he's giving me a bottle. He wouldn't even look at me. My mom wanted to know what changed. And he put a record because he's getting massive record collection to this day. He's still got a massive record collection and he put on some music. And supposedly I was, you know, waving my little arms to whatever rhythm of whatever song he put on ever since then, you know, I could do no wrong in Steve's eyes as a little one. <laughs> she likes music. So. Oh yeah, Charnel. Yeah. You don't you don't think you don't ever think that, that your parents won't be there until they're not. And then it just is it's just weird. Takes the rug out of you. I'm 55 and I still remember the feeling it was my father died suddenly from an aneurysm and they thought they caught it, but he kept saying, no, no, it's my time to go. And as near as they could tell, he talked himself into it. He was only 67 and I was 30. So, um, yeah, you don't ever think your parents will leave you. Oh, hon, and your husband passed away as well. COVID is not your friend. No. Oh, darling, you are having an awful year. I don't know what else to say. Uh, give you, other than I'd give you a, how about virtual hug, hon? How about a virtual hug? That's a lot to go through. That is a lot. But you're here. 
and you're talking and you had said that you have what else oh the chat only goes but so far back here we oh there it goes so and you have things going on ebay oh your boss's husband Wow, I thought I thought you were really having a horrible, horrible year there to lose both. Some people have. But still, that's somebody around you. I encouraged you a lot. Oh. So you're one of my are you one of my subscribers? I've gained so many lately because um Thrift You and a couple others have been so kindly and Katie on Vintage Vinyl have been promoting my channel. I just I saw a lot of the others and yeah they talk about their stuff but i didn't really see anybody that was dealing with what i was dealing with and i know i can't be the only one that has a big amount of stuff oh the tour of the basement you know that's george the antique nomad's fault <laughs> we were in a chat that he does well zeno does it where they play music and, and we all just chat on, on the weekend, on a Friday or a Saturday night. And we were talking about finds in the basement. And I mentioned that I had seen an old wooden pulley at uh, the Black Rose Antique Store in Chambersburg, PA, for $36 was the price tag they had on it. I think it was 36 And I have one in my basement. And he started asking questions. And I started telling him. And he's like, oh, I'd love to see that. Okay. <laughs> there, I mean, there is stuff you can hide. Now, he did give me some tips. He said, go take a good hard look at what's on that workbench and look for old tools. So there is a... I have a ranch full of my dad's stuff that had to move in. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, and you can only fit but so much in a trailer. You know, so now I've been doing this for a long while because at one point there were quite, there was more than one storage unit. And then uh, I got it down to one 10 by 10, but boy, everything was piled up taller than my head, which was a challenge because I'm only 5'4". But, you know, some of the piles were seven feet high. I made sure the lightest weight boxes were on top so I could get them back down again. But yeah, it's a, it's can be a lot to have all the stuff moved in. You you know you have something, but you don't know where. Have you gone through that yet, Charnel? It's like, oh wait, I know we have one of these. Where is it? And it's in a box, but you don't really know what box. I, I do that all the time. I'll see some Misty had something for sale, and I went, oh, I have one of those. Where? Hmm. So because of these boxes, though, is why I kind of think that when I do live sales, they are going to be a theme. Um, it's elephants for the first one because there's about 12 or 15 elephants in the live sale. Um, but the next one, I think I can't get into the attic. I can get there. I can open up the door. There is a tub that has my winter sweaters in it. And if I pull that out, I can actually walk in the door. And that's as far as I can go. I can't get into the attic any further than that. So somewhere back in there, behind all that stuff, is old Christmas stuff and boxes of Christmas stuff that I collected over the years that I need to sort out. So that's why I, I just don't have that much Christmas stuff. Because I just can't get to it. But I know I have a tub, the bedroom, the master bedroom video. There's a tub full of crocheted doilies and stuff and yeah a ton of tools but yeah but i um i could do a live sale just with vintage linens because i know there's two boxes at the other end of this living room from my friend's estate where i mean i was supposed to get the books but then at we're trying to empty this house out to get so the property can get sold. And it got to the point where they were just putting stuff in boxes and just loading it into my car. And I'd come home and open it up. And go, 
well, this isn't a book. <laughs> what is this? So I know there's at least two boxes of linens that I don't even know what they are because I just opened it up and went, oh, okay. And shut that box back up and put, just left it there. Lighting stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can point to them as well. A thrifted holiday video and a small tour of the family studio. Oh, that would be cool. That would be cool, Lady Hack Mom. Yeah, a, a lot of hand tools can be worth something. Um, I'm always on the lookout for wood chisels. I teach wood carving to Boy Scouts, and I'm always looking for little hand, hand chisels and stuff for wood stuff. Um, oh no, Charnel, you have to move? <gasps> and you've got all this stuff. I can't imagine having to move here. I, oh man, I would be able to deal with it. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to deal with it. <laughs> Oh, Fenton. Oh, Lady Hackmom, I have a piece of Fenton that's going up on the sale. I also have another. Where did I put it? Oh, you'll love this, too. This just tells you the bizarre stuff. I have an army helmet. You know, textured, kind of got some age to it. Possibly one from the Vietnam era. I have no idea. It's still got the liner. The stuff I find here. But. Ugh. Lady Hack Mom, maybe you can help me. This does not have a maker's mark. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I mean, it, it goes. It fades up to a kind of a pearlescent at the top i i don't have a clue hobnail but with no mark on it i haven't a clue who made it that is fenton two of the candle oh of the the big blue one that i showed yeah, that's a neat looking thing. That was in that one video about that I had found glass and I had no idea what I found. And I found out later I really shouldn't have passed up that Bohemian Crystal Berry Bowl. You think that might be Fenton? Oh, okay, because it would have had a sticker. Yeah, I wondered, but no idea. Ever, there's one or two pieces of glass around here. There never was a lot growing up. And I honestly don't even know where this one came from, but I was just sorting through a box and I found it. And so I was like, well, now what do I do? With it? <laughs> so that's, that's gonna, I'll stick it in with the Goodwill stuff. Cause that's going to have to get listed at some point. Cause I have to wash all that stuff that came from the Goodwill. I'll stick this with it too. I may have to put I may have to put this piece on uh, what is it old old thrifters oh I can't think of the name of it Jocelyn from Crazy Lamp Lady started it and it's an identification site you can put stuff up and that you haven't been able to find and they'll help you identify it but I'm gonna I'm gonna try first I have a website that is great for finding out maker's marks for Japan. And then they also have the same website also has a page. That's a lot of the Chinese marks, which comes in handy. You binge watched my show. Yeah. That little one is a real, really unusual, unusual shape. Um, you binge watched the show. Then you know exactly what I'm dealing with here. <laughs> Oh, I had some comments from that very first video that I deleted because there were people going, you know, you should just throw all that in a dumpster. I'm like, not a chance, pal. Not a chance. So, 
But I, I started the channel, like I said, because um, I know there's people that, that have to be dealing with it. We've all got parents and grandparents and the stuff gets inherited. And yeah, a lot of people just assume hoarder. And that's not, that's not, oh, the salt dish one. Yeah, that was a great collection of salt dishes. Yeah, it's it's not that I've hoarded it all. It's just when you inherit, you get in mass. You know, you just you're getting stuff totally in mass instead of just like, oh, well, I bought this and can't keep piling it up and piling it up. And there there is a room in the house that does have some stuff that I bought a lot of and piled it up. Uh, but they were always meant to be used but I can't get to them. So how can I use them? Um, because there's some needlepoint kits and things that I, I miss doing, but I can't, I've finished the ones I could get to, but there's boxes of them and there's boxes of books from my own collection. Yeah. Yeah. Not having room for the things that your heart likes is a space issue. Absolutely. I mean, if you've seen the one from my china closet, my china closet is stuffed because it is the stuff I really like, the little stuff that I could fit in there. Um, but even that hasn't been purged in a long time. So there's going to have to be some some purging. Probably some of the resin fairies will go and uh, maybe one or two other things. But for the most part, that's that's some of my little treasures. So a lot of that won't go anywhere. But like the the Barbies I have, they were special because mom gave them to me. But Christmas is coming. They're the three of them are in really good shape. They've never been out of the box. And either they can go to somebody who collects them. Two of them are fairies. Um, or they can be as you can get them as a Christmas present for somebody. So 500 projects that you're working on. Yeah, one of my biggest projects is the house itself. And if you've been watched, binge watched my videos, you saw that. That's that's why I talk about having the goals. Having the goals to try to keep you focused. Um, the tree cutters, I heard back from them. They're finally supposed to show up. Possibly this week, but probably next. And take down that big magnolia. But then I got another kick today. Um... My car is in the shop because it was leaking steering fluid. So we'll see what that's going to cost. And the other kick, though, is knowing I need to get a new heater as soon as I can. Yeah, it's it's good to have an awakening. That My awakening was having the hernia in mid-December. And... It was the second one I've had and realizing that the job I had was tearing me apart in some ways, not mental or anything. I like my job, but all that bending and then lifting a tote full of stuff was a problem. Now, luckily it healed without surgery, but... And that was a big awakening that going, you know, you're just, you're not getting through this stuff fast enough. There's got to be a way to, you can up your, up your game here. And so that's when I decided to bite the bullet and pay that little fee for a basic store, make eBay my project, start a, start a channel and really get moving on it. Someone asked you what you collect. Do you find it hard to answer that question? Someone asked me what I collect. Because when you have so much stuff, you can't get to your collections. And I collect Gilbert and Sullivan stuff. And yeah. Yeah, for drinking, may start making a list. I have a whole notebook that is my big list for the house, for all the stuff that's got to get done. I went room by room, and it really helped focus on 
what you can get done if you only have a little bit of time. It gives you things. I mean, it's really detailed to the point of minutia in that there's little tiny projects that might take five to 20 minutes that you could go, okay, I need to take care of this, even if it's just cleaning the windows in that room. And it was great because it gave me such a boost that, okay, I got this done, this done, this done, and that worked on the house. And then there's bigger projects like, you know, repairs that have to get done. You learned you like pie birds. Pie birds are pretty cool. If you find some of the older ones, they're really very different. Um, and mother's Fenton shoes. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for looking like I'm sticking my nose up at you. It's my glasses have gotten to the point where I can only read with the bifocal part. And that's, I got to get new glasses. And I keep putting it off now because I need that heater. I collect things. What is it, Charnel? I collect things. Got other people that collect things. I collected everything Jocelyn ever mentioned. Oh, darling, don't do that. Holy Moses, if you collect everything Jocelyn ever mentions, you'll run out of space in a week. That girl. <laughs> wow. <laughs> The amount of knowledge she has, and I've gone back and started trying to binge watch a lot of her shows, and you you do. It's like watching Antique Nomad. You will learn an awful lot. Um, yeah, see, isn't it true? Um, you're doing one project, and then you can't get any further because you got to finish something else. My problem is, is that I can only get so far because there is no away in this house. Oh, I want to keep that. Well, I need to put it away. Well, away is full. And not full of the stuff that you picked out. It's just full. So where do you put it? So it's it's uh, it's a challenge. <laughs> it's like one of those little sliding puzzles. You got to move this piece here to get this piece to here. And this piece has got to be down here. But to get it there, you got to move this one and this one and this one. and. That's what I always think of it as. Is it's not a Jenga because Jenga, the whole purpose of a Jenga is to pull stuff out and something collapses. This is more like a sliding puzzle. You got to move it all around, and but that's why that's why I do what I do is to help people figure that out and tell them they're not alone. They're not alone. Yeah, George's channel would be the death of you if you were collecting what he talks about. I didn't know at that little house, there's a video with George had fat bird finds and he had Misty. I think he had Jeffrey. Um, so I think he had all, all of them at his little house. He wasn't kidding. He bought that house just to hold all that little stuff, all the tiny stuff. I thought he was kidding. I thought maybe that was like his prep spot where he cleans stuff to get it ready to take to the shows. No, it's just to store because you do end up when you buy lots of stuff, you do end up with, you know, all this minutia, tiny stuff. And that's just where he puts it. That's just storage. That's why he let them come in and shop it. I want to go shop there. <laughs> wow. I'm like, yeah, he asked me, he says, you know what you need? You need a house like that. You need a storage house. We were talking about it the other night on, uh, on that music thing that they do. So you could just chat. He, he said of all the people whose videos he's ever seen, I need a storage house. And I think he's right. I need a storage house, but I don't have the, the figures of money that he does. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> just keep two or three. Yeah, two or three projects at most seems to be the best way, Lady Hack Mom. It seems to be the best way to just keep two or three. But that's not easy to do. I find it hard to juggle getting listings done, 
getting videos done. Um, it took me two days to two full days to get things pulled, researched, figured out a price for the live sale. And I still need to make a list of the background info for each item that needs to have it. Cause some stuff doesn't have a mark on it, but I do know who the maker is, but I need to write that down. Cause I know during the sale, I'll probably forget. Um, and then on top of that, you know, I'm an assistant scout master with the boy scout troop. So I've got stuff to do there. I've got a regular job. <laughs> I've got housework to deal with. I've got yard work to deal with. Um, and all the stuff for, for doing eBay, you know, you've got to, and I've got to get into my packing room. My packing room really needs to be a massive overhaul because the packing room looks as messed up as this file behind me. Raccoons got into that sucker earlier this year. And it turned out Mama Raccoon had three little ones in there. So I had to tear the room apart to clean it all. But now my boxes are all out of whack and not sorted and not stacked anymore. And, and it looks just like a big mound of cardboard. There are a few things I feel the need to keep, but that's why they're in the China closet. Um, a lot of this stuff, I have the same feeling of that, Charnel, is that I really like would like to find, you know, a good home for a lot of this stuff. Because I think it's better that we find good homes for it if we can than for, than it for it to go in a dumpster. And with so many places closed in in media near where I live, there used to be a thing called the free store and you could take stuff and just drop it off and they'd put it on the shelves. And if you saw something you liked, you could just take it with you. It was basically a, a, a little store that was a swap meet and they ran by donations to pay the rent and the light bill and all that. But COVID shut all that down and it was a nice alternative to Goodwill. Because Goodwill's got a heck of a racket. I like Goodwill, but not thrilled that they've up to retail prices because I think that's gouging their market. But they get their stuff for free. For free. And yes, they do have to process it and they do have to hire people. But at the same time, you're complaining about how much stuff you're getting, which I am absolutely not seeing in my local Goodwill. But you're complaining that you have too much stuff, yet you're up in the prices so people who need to shop at Goodwill because of the cheaper prices now can't afford it because some of your stuff is above retail. I saw a thing tonight that was when I was there was above retail. I'm like, that's ridiculous. You have $9.99 on this thing, and I know darn well that I can walk into Target and buy it for $5.99. Oh, Charnel, I, I do the same thing. Uh, set up a place to take pics for the listings and ended up covering it with things to take pics of. I have that bad habit too right now because I'm still not used to having a place to take pictures. I, um, I bought, it took forever to get here because it came from China, but I bought a cheap light box because I really needed some better way to do it. And I have a light box now and I have a little scale, but I have filled up the table that they're supposed to be sitting on. And I need to get much better at that. It's, it's very hard to get to the discipline level that you know darn well Misty has. If you've ever seen her packing and all that, She's got it down, but that comes from having to do it as a job for a long time. You can't, you can't let yourself do like you and I are doing right now, where we fill our workspace. It, it's, it takes a lot of self-discipline, and, and I'm not there yet. I know I'm not there yet to not fill up that space. That's a problem. So it's, it can be a challenge. I get it. I absolutely get it.
Where are they? Oh yeah, it, it is hard. Shipping prices for, for the post office have gone up. Part of it is what Congress did years ago. Congress made them have to prepay their pension plan for employees they have not even hired yet. What corporation would ever do that nonsense? So that's that's what's truly crippling um, previous to this, what has been crippling the United States Postal Service. They don't they don't have a smart business model because of that prepaid pension thing. How do you prepay a pension on people you haven't even hired yet? That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. But our Congress did that one. So it'll take our Congress to to get that out of there. But they um they've had some tough times by having those sorting machines in a lot of places taken out. And the prices have been jumped up. They're trying to make it seem like it's Amazon and FedEx. But, you know, our postal system is something we've had since the beginning of the country. So they need to stop playing around with that. And we do now, granted, we do for a first class letter have some of the cheapest mail costs for a first class letter of most countries. Especially when you consider our size. But yeah, shipping packages across the country to your kids is going to be pricey. Um, I'd recommend gift cards if you if you know of some place that that they really like, because that's seen that's easier to ship. So let's see. I have to back up in the chat between you two because. Uh, my kid in Washington. You're sewing. Oh, you have a sewing area. <gasps> One of my nieces took the sewing machine from my mother, and I have my great aunts, but I haven't had the thing opened in years. So when I do get it open and have somewhere to sew, I'll have to probably get the machine overhauled, the oil all cleaned out and redone. Yeah. I have so much fabric here. It's just insane. My mother used to be a professional seamstress and kept every scrap of fabric. Some quilter is going to absolutely love when I do bags of all cotton from like the, the 60s or the 50s or wherever. Because I could do scrap bags and sell them. <laughs> Part of the dining room was where she used to cut everything out in the dining room table. And there's the big drawer for the buffet. And the drawer is like this deep. And it's huge because it's a huge Civil War era dining room set. And it's like about this wide, but this deep. And it's full of little scraps of fabric. Plus there's, there is a at least three, well, probably four foot high pile of fabric that goes down one wall in the dining room. I haven't even touched it. Haven't even touched it. A shelving unit in the living room to take pics. I have a shelving unit in the little back hallway here. And that's where I put the stuff that I've listed on eBay because I needed to have somewhere to set it where it was safe and out of the way. So you take the, so Charnel, you take the pictures and then pack it. Is that before you've even sold it that you have it all packed? I don't do that because I would end up with a massive amount of little boxes because that I think would take up more space and space is at a premium here. Yeah, the kid, it's funny. The kids don't always want what you have, but at the same time, 
the grandchildren might, but like you said, they're little kids. And they love your paintings. Well, Charnel, maybe you can paint something and send that. Something nice and lightweight, like a t-shirt for the little ones with original artwork by grandma. Yeah, I, I've been, I, I was buying a lot and I have quite a few shopping videos and some haul videos that I still have to process because my editing skills are still shaky there um, and get them up, up online. But I was doing most of that because I was either, oh, like when I went out to uh, around Chambersburg, PA, that was a mini vacation. Um that was the beginning of October and I still don't have all the video up for that. And I, um, I've had to stop shopping today was probably one of the last because I've just, I've got so much, but I just needed to get out of the house. And, and the shopping I have done has been primarily just because we were there. My son plays magic, the gathering, which is a card game a strategy card game and the one store is right next to the good goodwill. So if he goes up there and we're running errands on a Friday, I'm not going to pass up the chance to walk through that goodwill. But for the most part, I'm not actively hunting for stuff to shop and, and find. eBay is a good solution. Yeah. I look at eBay like this eBay is the biggest flea market in the world. But you don't get sunburned. You don't get cold. You don't get rained on. And you always know where the bathrooms are. It's great. It has its hassles for both a buyer and a seller. Yes. But so does a real flea market. You know, so does the having to go out and drive somewhere and, you know, but eBay is really the biggest flea market in the world, but it's great because you always know where the bathrooms are. You don't get sunburned. You don't get rained on. You don't have the cold weather. It's great. It's great. So do what you can with it. I have also been burned by not charging enough shipping. That is a problem. I did buy a scale. And I still got burned. And then I figured out why. So I used eBay's thing to figure out the postage on something. Don't do that. Use the United States Postal Service website to find out the actual cost. If you're doing like I'm still having to do, taking it to the post office, and I know everybody, the niche lady and a couple others have like hollered at me for that saying, no, no, no. Um, but I don't have a printer right now. My son has the printer. The printer is upstairs. He's out of ink anyway. So I can't use eBay shipping to print a label and then be able to sell it. So if you use eBay's calculator, they are calculating the price, assuming you are going to get the label from them. When you get the label from them, there is a discount on the shipping. So they show a lower shipping cost than what you will get if you have to take it to the post office and have them weigh it, then it's going to be higher. I didn't know this, and I went ahead and used eBay's thing, and boy, did I get stung on a couple of things. So I ended up, I ended up having a real problem there. So that's, that's a thing to keep in mind. I did stop losing quite so much of shipping when I did buy a cheap digital scale. That has made a huge difference, but just make sure that when you're trying to factor it, you, you use, if you have to go to the post office, use the United States Postal Service's website to figure out, because you can punch in the zip code, the size, dimensions of the box, and the weight. And it'll give you a cost of the shipping. Use that instead of eBay's because eBay's giving you that discount and you're going to get stung on the shipping then if you have to take it to the post office and have them weigh it and do it that way.
So I have to back up a little bit, get caught in the caught up in the chat. It's easier for me to do the chat on the laptop than on the phone because it doesn't make my neck hurt as much to look through the bifocals. And I can scroll. Uh... Oh, you pre-bubble wrap it to keep it safe. Yeah. Yeah, I've go through a lot of bubble wrap. That's another reason I have to get that, that packing room straightened up. I've been having a hard time finding a local place to get bubble wrap. There used to be a place you could buy packing supplies in a small town near me, but now they've gone to where they, oh, they only want to do wholesale orders. Okay, how big is a wholesale order? And then they didn't answer me. Dude, I need peanuts, and you used to sell bags that were as big as me, and I need packing peanuts, so I wouldn't mind buying two of those. And I need bubble wrap. And I don't want some dinky little tiny thing of bubble wrap from Walmart or Target. I want a big roll of bubble wrap. So they're giving me a runaround. So I don't know what I'm going to do because I need more bubble wrap and I need more peanuts. And it doesn't. But these guys were kind of nuts that they didn't want to even talk about it. Like, are you kidding me? I'm ready to come like fill my car and then some. Oh, see, Lady Hagman, we don't have, they don't do a 50% off day. We're lucky in my area that they do a senior day in, in my local Goodwill. They do not do a 50% off day. They, the local one never posts that there's a discount on any color. Never, never. They're annoying. eBay or pirate ship. Okay. I'm not set up for either one of them yet. Um, once I figure out what's going on to, well, the heater is going to be a while. That's going to be a big expense. And I have no way to refinance anything to get that. But I, um, I need to get a little printer so that I can do eBay and pirate ship. Yeah. I, I'm not happy having to keep going to the post office. It's just that I just can't um, I can't justify the over $100 for that printer just now when I can't even see out of my glasses properly and I need that heater. So, yeah, we should say goodnight. We've been on for an hour and, like, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, I had to sign a waiver for the heater saying use at my own risk. So we do have a carbon monoxide detector, which I've always had one of those. Um, but this year has just been rough. I had hoped to, to be able to pick up, you know, another job or something. But and I did try to get financing and I can't get any because they insist on counting my brother as part of my income, even though he's a renter and we have a rental agreement. Um, so I couldn't get any help. So that's, that made it a big kick in the teeth. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Just going to mean a lot of live sales. That was one of the things that really kind of pushed me that if I got to a hundred subscribers to go for a live sale. So that's where we're at. So hopefully, hopefully it'll work being Thursday. Um, I happen to have this Thursday off, so it's going to start at 9.30. Um, because Patrick from Trusty Huckster said he's going to just do a short pop-up sale that night. You wanted to ask about that. About what? About the live sale? Hmm. 
My image is buffering on the laptop. But the chat was still going. A live sale is easier to sell than eBay. I'm, I'm sure hoping so. But I think they each take their own amount of work. Um, I've talked to Misty a fair amount uh, and a couple other people that have done the live sales. The live sale. Yeah, it has been fun, Lady Hack Mom. I guess you're about to go to bed. I'm going to answer this question and then and then I guess we all should go do what we need to do. Um, the live sale is a great way to get a lot of merchandise out quickly in a short space of time. However, you still have to get emails from everyone and send them an invoice. And then once they pay you, in my case through PayPal, um, then you still have to ship it all out. So you still have to do a lot of work. Whereas eBay, you have to write up a listing. You don't have to write up a listing here, but eBay takes care of the financial side of it. eBay does take care of dealing with the invoice, as it were. Whereas a live sale, I'm going to have to go into my email and invoice everybody. So this time that I would be saving on doing a listing is going to be eaten up by having to do... Um, the invoices have i had people not pay well i've not done a live sale before this is my very first one though i have heard that mentioned on other live sales that sometimes doesn't seem to happen often um oh hi rv vagabond um you're catching us at the tail end here i i just did a haul and then we started discussing things that were going on in the chat. But uh, I have heard of, of a few of them say they've put things back up in the next live sale because somebody hadn't paid. So I don't know if it's a big problem or not. Oh, your name's Debbie. Okay. I'll try to remember that. I'm horrible with names. It took me a while. Cat and Paul's, her name is Gretchen, and she kept laughing at me because I kept calling her a different name. Um, my Boy Scouts laugh at me for that, too. But but it's I think it is a trade-off about the live sales because it's it's faster to get more sales out the door, but as far as your time frame versus eBay for listings... I think it is better. I think the live sales are going to be a lot better. So, yeah, Gretchen's a sweetheart. So, um, who's the other one? Little Diana. Little little Vintage Me 64. I'm trying to get the names to the different ones. <laughs> now, it would not be fun to not get paid. Um, Vinny does just lie. He does have a little bit online. Vinny does have a thrift. You. Oh, I guess it is morning now. Thrift you. Hi. Yeah. You don't sleep. Do you? I'm betting that's Sarah. <laughs> when they were talking, you guys were talking about how little you sleep. You and Misty. I bought something from Misty one night from her website, from her, from her eBay. And she answered me at two o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding. Do you never sleep? And she said, no, only, only a few hours a night, you know? So you and Misty, man. <laughs> oh, you're doing shipping. So. But yeah, I do think the, the live sale will be good. Um, I've got a lot of stuff. Like I said, I don't care if I don't get through all of it. it it's mostly just had 60 items just to make sure it was a backup. So, oh, and Sam's there too. Well, hello. Good morning to you guys. What time is it for you guys? It's, it's, it's about quarter of 5 a.m. here in Pennsylvania. Shipping hell. <laughs> My biggest challenge for shipping sometimes is finding a box. Oh, it's 3.45 a.m. for you guys. 
Okay, so you're an hour, you're an hour behind me. Charnel, anytime. Anytime. <laughs> so like I said, I know I know what it's like. That this this pile behind me is absolute proof that I know what it's like to have to suddenly inherit all that stuff. So but, oh. 244. Oh, 244. Oh. RV Vagabond is... Oh, you just told me your name. Debbie. It was 244 in the morning? Where you're at? Yeah, I started off doing it as a live just because I wanted to see um, if there was anybody on the West Coast that was awake. Because I've noticed with a lot of the live sales, most yes, I am sale selling this week, Thanksgiving night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. That's the time that we had set up. Now, Patrick Patrick says he's going to not go, go long because tr trusty huckster mercantile has his sale beforehand. But we'll see how that works. <laughs> we'll see how that really works. But uh, my first live, good Lord help me. But we'll see what happens. Good night, Charnel. Yeah, he was very kind to to let me. I had messaged him and asked him that um, was he doing a sale on Thanksgiving night? Because if he wasn't, could I slide into his time slot? I usually work Thursday nights. Oh, thanks, Charnel. Um, but it, it seemed like a good slot because I know not everybody can get together with family this year. And some people don't have family near them anyway. So... I thought Thanksgiving night might be a good time, especially if you don't watch football. I don't like football in the snow or the rain when they're sliding all over the place. So I won't be watching the football. <laughs> yeah. For thrift you, you guys are hard for me to catch because you guys are on. I happen to be at work and I was trying to watch and listen to you guys on the way home. Well, not watch, but at least just listen. Um, because by the time you guys start, my shift isn't quite ended yet. So I had to work Sunday night. So that's why I was only there for part of it. But we were up and after I had shown my haul from Goodwill... We were discussing the, the pile behind me and sharing stories about how how fun it is to inherit a bunch of stuff. Charnel Sykes is in the same boat. Oh, yeah, we all will end up on top of each other. But I like watching his, just like I like watching yours. Hey, I've got one for you since you're on. Because the other ladies that were on earlier, none of us have been able to ID this thing. Isn't this pretty? And yes, by the time we get to the live sale, I will get another light for for over on this, well, this side. So things aren't aren't so shaded. But why would it have holes in it? We can't figure out what it is. So, I don't know. It's, it's marked Nippon, so it's it's early. From Japan. Beautiful piece. Really pretty. But we can't figure out what the devil that sucker is. I found it. It's got a goodwill mark. So my mother bought it at some point and put it up in top of the kitchen cabinet. Oh, what did I inherit? Oh, good Lord. What didn't I? All this stuff behind me is all... This end is the mess end. But it is row, 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 and row. It's, it's five rows and in some spots six rows wide. 20 feet that way, all boxes of stuff that goes either stuff, some of it's stuff from my great grandparents' house, and then there's stuff from an aunt's house, and then there's stuff from a friend who passed away and left me a massive book collection. And in emptying her house, they were trying to empty it out 
So it got to where some of the stuff wasn't, um, wasn't books. I'd open up a box and there'd be other stuff in there. They just were shoving stuff at me. I know there's at least two boxes of linens up at the other end there. So I don't know if it's a planter, but yeah, it seems like it should drain water, but why would you put such beautiful hand-painted flowers on the inside? But yeah, I've, I've inherited a lot. <laughs> I used to sell under another name on eBay and I had been on eBay since their second year when you still had to host your own pictures and all that. My outfits for my share doll paid for a flatbed scanner. The knee high stack of little golden books paid for the digital camera. Uh, so I've been doing stuff for a long while, but then when I've inherited so much stuff and got downsized out of a job, uh, at an art museum, that's when everything had to leave the storage unit. And I also inherited the house and what was in it. So then it all had to come here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, what, what didn't I inherit? Between having three estates stuffed in here, I find all kinds of stuff. That's why every video is different. You know, the last one I did before tonight was, yes, my, my new goal is to get the heater fixed, Debbie. Because I don't know how long this one's going to last. They have patched the inside of that firebox as much as they can. It's literally more spackling inside than, than actual firebox anymore. So that's, that's the new goal is the heater. And that's a big, big goal. I mean, I made the money to get the tree down. My heater has been repaired so much they can't repair it anymore. And because I have a disabled brother living with me, I couldn't get help from any of the organizations that help low-income people get a new heater or get uh, oil. Yeah, it's my furnace. Right now it is still working, but that heater is from... Let's see. We got that heater the same year my father died. So that heater's from 1996. It's a damp basement. It's a three-story, ten-room house. That thing gets worked a lot. But over the years, they have had to patch the, the they've had to patch the firebox inside that furnace for a long time. It's an oil burner. I I did look into getting gas. I can't get gas. Because in the state of Pennsylvania, your gas line to your heater can only be so long from where it enters the house. And it is three or four feet too far away. And there's no other chimney. Because my dad, in his infinite wisdom, kicked the chimney off the other side. Uh, no, we did try to go through getting services because my brother is disabled. But they, again, look at his... He has a pension as well as social security disability. He's eight years older than I am. So he's already in his sixties and they say his pension is too much, but his pension pays for his healthcare. He pays out of pocket for blue cross blue shield, which is I think crazy, but you know, he, he pays through, through the nose for that. But yeah, we got turned down. I was really pissed. I was really pissed, <laughs> but it's, it's the same problem of why we've, we've had trouble getting help and things in the past, even though we have a rental agreement because he is my sibling. They insist that I have to count his income as if it were mine for Christ's sakes. We're not married. Isn't that frustrating? You know, it's very frustrating. But because he's a direct, what they considered a direct relation. Now, they don't consider my son a direct relation. So they don't count his money because technically he's not my son. He's my nephew. But Mike's been with me since he was two years old. And he's 26 now. He moved back in to try to help out around here um, because of me having had the hernia. Um, he, he moved back in. When, when I got hurt back in December. But, you know, this, this was supposed to be temporary and then COVID hit. So he hasn't bothered to look for an apartment, but he does all the heavy lifting that I couldn't do. 
but now um yeah so even he's he picked up a second job to try to help and and my second job is is clearing this place out and selling all the cool stuff off but but yeah we tried going that route and got denied so getting a new furnace it works now i can hear it now it's on right now um, we do have carbon monoxide detector to make sure nothing happens um and and that's just it's what it is it's oil heat and mike's paid for the, the the batch of oil he got it all topped off so that's what mike's second job has been doing he's taking care of keeping the heat on but yeah it, it so sucks i inherited the house and my parents were only the second owners so there is a lot of really cool stuff here and original to the house like they're still on the third floor it's still the push button light switches that's kind of cool um but my dad didn't really take care of the house so the house got some major issues and so i'm trying to restore it most of the issues are in the part they built in 1935 which is you can see this big archway that's solid brick with plaster over it that's where the house used to stop in 1911. I'm sitting in a tiny little extension on the end of the living room um, that they made the living room a little longer. And then past me, there is a porch built into the house, too. So 10 rooms. I think my brother Gary's room is the only room that there's not stuff stuffed in. And... It's old. <laughs> it's old and it has issues. And it is a historic house for my area because I'm in the daughter's house of the man who built the local elementary school, the cross streets named for the same family. The original family homestead from the early 1800s is across the street. So my goal is to get the place, you know, restored but it's got issues and I didn't know I was getting it. So that didn't help either. So I started off in debt because the first year I ended up putting all the utilities and the heat on credit card. Isn't that just fun? I don't recommend that nonsense, but when you don't know you're getting a house that comes with a sibling in it and you suddenly get to, have to take on all the taxes and everything else, which I was blessed in that the estate took care of the taxes that first year. I've been in this house my whole life. I briefly was moved out for college, but, um, but then I got my nephew. Okay. I hope you're there. I would love to have you guys at my, my sale. It should be fun. I'll tell weird jokes. My brother's great for that. So <laughs> I'll tell some of his. But yeah, I've been in this house since 1965. My parents have owned the house since 1962. And, uh, and dad, dad didn't like the house. So the best dad story about this house was the day the electrician, one of my scout dads came and we'd had a problem. There was a short in a line and it was causing the, the master bedroom and the only bathroom with the shower to not have electric. So he volunteered to come take a look at it. And I showed him that the hall light kept going off and on and we couldn't figure out why. So he checked the wiring on that. He takes the wall light down and my father had used white first aid tape to hook the wires together. Through the blessings of heaven, we never had a fire. <laughs> but he, my dad just, uh, you know, I mean, I talk about you work with what you got, but there are limits to that. So I find surprises. Dad always went crazy cheap. <laughs> and I'm trying not to, but I'm also not going to break my bank. My bank's already broken. I've robbed Peter to pay Paul so often they've both gone into witness protection. So, 
Yeah, it's, 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 it is a, a wow moment. But I'm still smiling, you know? What are you going to do? Let it beat you down? You can't let it do that. I did enough of that. You know, I, I went through... One of the reasons I've had this for so long and it's still like this is because I went through some severe depression. Um, because this was really rough. I had... The hardest part was when I had to send my nephew to go live with his dad to finish high school because I got downsized out of that art museum job and I couldn't afford the private school anymore because we're in a distressed school district. So I didn't want him to go here. And I actually had to send him to go spend his junior and senior year living with his dad in, in a tiny little apartment. And that was rough. That was rough. And then you're then you then you really have to take a good hard look at what what's surrounded you. And it feels so claustrophobic here. And I had to work through that. But now I have, and now I'm like been gung-ho this whole year. I am so thrilled I found this community because they have been such a big help and really have helped keep me focused in a lot of ways. Though I do run into problems in that there's so many videos to watch and it's hard to watch them and do something else, especially when it's like George, the antique nomad, um, um, the devil was that? Oh, it was the cat. Every once in a while, she decides to hide at the other end. There's a window. And she likes to hop up and get into that windowsill. And it, she's exploring. She's probably trying to come across the pile to get to me. I hear her. <laughs> she has a spot she likes to sleep. Of all things, there is an old tin um, fire bucket by the fireplace. And she likes to curl up inside of it. It used to have pine cones in it as fire starter, but she likes to sleep in that. So she's back in that corner somewhere. I think she's heading to the firebox. So, but yeah, this community has been great. It's been great. But at the same time, it is kind of hard to get work done because you're always watching other people's channels. So, well, Debbie, I should go myself. I, uh, I thought this was going to be a short little... <laughs> haul video. I don't know how long I've been on because for some reason, while it's still going through my phone, what I'm looking at so I can read the chat easier on the laptop, the image has been buffering for the last, I don't know, 20 minutes. So I got to go get stuff done. I have to get this stuff washed. I have everything set for the live sale. That's all next to me. But I need to get all this stuff dealt with. And I need to try to make some space on this side because I don't have, I found out one flaw in my logic for the live sale. I don't have anywhere to sit anything if it doesn't sell. I'm, I'm still of the positive attitude that a lot of this is going to go. It's a very eclectic mix, but my prices are low. I'm really hoping it's all going to go. But I don't have anywhere to sit aside anything it doesn't sell. So I've really got a clear space over here that I can put a box or something for that stuff. So, Debbie, have a good night. I saw your last video. You have some cute stuff. I didn't join in that video for obvious reasons. I don't have anywhere to really decorate much. <laughs> Not yet. I decorate the front door. And I have snowman curtains that have to go up in my kitchen. And that's about the extent of it for now. We'll get there. So have a good night. And I hope you can make it to the live sale. My first live is Thanksgiving night at 930 Eastern Standard Time. All right. And thank you for showing up here. I mean, I just did it as a live just because it was just easier. And then I started having people come on. So I was answering the chat. So you have a good night, and I'll see, yeah, I'll see you at the live sale. Well, figuratively, anyway. Bye.